Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. That his name cannot be overcome. That means it doesn't matter what you're facing, his name. Nothing is above the name of our Jesus. So, Father God, we thank you right now that your name is above cancer. Your name is above COVID-19. Your name is above racial tension. Your name is above economic instability. Your name is above, oh God. Your name is above, oh principality and power, God. In the name of Jesus, there is no name higher than the name of Jesus. We thank you right now, Lord. We thank you that you're in this place and where the presence of the Lord is. There is freedom and there is liberty and there is hope and there is peace and there is joy. And you're able to turn our darkness into light. So Jessica came to me. She had a word that the Lord put on her heart and I just want her to share because I believe there is, the, there is something that God is wanting to do today as he always wants to do. And he wants us to step out if we have something and she came to me and I just want you to share, Jessica. So the last two first win or noon prayers, I've had severe back pain. And um, last week I was like, oh, it's just me. But then this week I've been fine. And it came on right when uh, noon prayer started. And there's two things that I feel like the Lord said. And one is if you are dealing with chronic severe back pain, that he wants to heal you today. And so we want to declare and pray for you. And then the, um, the second is that God wants to bring alignment spiritually in the body of Christ. So will you join me if you have severe or chronic back pain, just touch that back pain wherever it is. And we are going to release healing because where Jesus is, miracles break out. There is healing for you. And so, Lord, right now we lift you high. We declare that you are the God of miracles, that there is no one like you. And so, Lord, right now we release your presence to go to every person who is dealing with chronic or severe back pain. We command it to go right now in Jesus' name that you be lifted. All pain go in Jesus' name. And we speak alignment to them right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in the body of Christ. We thank you that you are calling forth an alignment spiritually. So Lord, we release your, per, your presence and your Holy Spirit. God, we call forth alignment from the top of the head to the soles of the feet. We speak in every part of the spine in the body of Christ. Line up in Jesus' name that there be no more foundational issues, God, but that you would re bring forth and realign every part of the body of Christ that needs to stand up. I call forth and I say, rise up in Jesus' name that we may stand firm on the word of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. One, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just feel like the Lord is bringing a release in your life. I believe right now that you've been found faithful by the Lord and God just wants you to be bold. He wants you to be courageous. He wants you to step into the open doors that he has for your life. So Father God, right now I thank you for Jessica, Father God. I thank you for the anointing that you're releasing in her life, oh God. I pray right now for more of that in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the fire that is in her belly right now in the name of the Lord God. I thank you right now that you're giving her a discernment, you're strengthening her discernment. I thank you for the spirit of healing that is upon her life. I thank you for the gift of faith that is in her, God. And I thank you, Father God, for that gift of leadership, Lord God. So I thank you right now. We pray for boldness. We pray for courage, God, to step forward and to step in to all that you have for her. And we declare no weapon formed against her will prosper in the name of the Lord. And the firewall of, of your presence and your protection is around her now, God. I pray right now you're fanning to flame many more like her in the name of Jesus. Let's give us some praise. Let's give the Lord some praise right now. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, worship team. Thank you all. Thank you all for being online. There is a fire in here today. I'm just excited to be with you all today for noon prayer. We're going to have Tawanda share. You can always be seated right now. But there's just something that the Lord put on my heart just to share with you briefly before she comes and um, the Lord was just speaking to me from 
my candle lighter. And um, he was saying, ultimately, the purpose of a candle lighter is to ultimately not keep the fire to itself, right? But to ultimately light the wick that is in the candle. Just like that. To set candles alight. And I believe right now in the body of Christ that God is wanting to ignite a fire. I believe right now that God is wanting to set the body of Christ on fire. And he says that in, in Luke 12, 49, I have come to set the world on fire and I wish it were already burning. And the way that it will be already burning is if us that are called to be fire lighters don't keep the fire to ourselves. But we actually allow the Lord to open doors for us so that we can set others on fire. The thing about fire is both physically and spiritually, it can be caught. Fire can be caught. And God just needs us to be faithful in this season to say, you know what, God? You placed a fire in me. I'm going to be used by you to set a fire in the lives of those around me, to set a fire in my schools, in my communities, in my businesses. You don't have to be a pastor. God just needs those that have a fire in their bellies right now, that are tired of things just being as they are and saying, God, use me, send me. I have a fire and a fire can bring change in this world. So right now, I just want to pray for those of you that say, God has ignited a fire in me. And I believe right now that I am actually a fire starter. I really believe right now that God is wanting to use me to ignite a fire. And it's not down to age. You could be five years old. You could be, you could be 50 years old. You could be 99 years old. It's not an age thing. It's not an education thing. It's not about how many doctors you have. It's about do you have a fire and a passion for the living God? Because that is what will set the world on fire. So right now, I want you to stand if you believe God is wanting to use you as a fire starter. In your businesses, wherever you are, you are not here just to tick a box. You're not here just to pass time. You're here to see a change. You're here to start a fire. You're here to see God be glorified in the earth. Because Jesus is not walking in this life, but he's walking through us right now. And we are the ones that are going to bring the fire into every situation that he opens up for us. So right now, let's raise our hands together. I want you to pray for yourself. I want you to pray that God will give you the boldness, will give you courage, will give you strength, that you will continue to cultivate that fire in your own heart, that God will continue to open doors for you, that you will not stand back no more, you will not be afraid any longer, that you will pioneer change wherever that is in the name of Jesus. So Father God, right now I come, Lord, as a fire starter right now, with my brothers and my sisters right now that are saying, we are here to ignite a fire. I pray right now, Father God, I pray for our own hearts and our own lives that we will cultivate a fire in this season, Lord God. And I pray right now for a boldness and a courage to step out in the name of Jesus. I pray for a tenacity now, God, that will push for change in the name of the Lord, that we will not settle for less than what is, in, what is inside of us, oh God. I pray right Right now for the release of gifts of the spirit right now God I pray for anointing I pray right now for a baptism of fire in the body of Christ in the name of Jesus set us a light again in the name of the Lord oh God we are not diminished in the name of Jesus awaken your bride in the name of the Lord God bring us forth into the glorious hour that we are called to now in the name of Jesus I declare holiness over us now in the name of the Lord God I pray right now that you'll burn away sin in the name of Jesus. I pray you'll burn away compromise in the name of the Lord. You'll burn away competitiveness in the name of the Lord. You'll burn away envy and jealousy in the name of the Lord God. You'll purify our heart in the name of Jesus so that we will shine bright in this hour in the name of the Lord. And I pray right now, God, that you will open doors for us in the name of Jesus for our voices to be heard, oh God. I pray right now, God. God, arise in this name of in the name of Jesus. Cause us to arise in this season, Lord God, and no longer hold back, Lord. We thank you that the greater days are ahead, are ahead of us, Lord, than anything that we've left behind, Lord. 
So I pray as we are cultivating that fire within, Lord, that we will affect those around us, Lord Jesus, and we will see a fire, Lord God, like we've never seen it before. So I thank you for this moment and for this time, Lord. May we not allow that fire to go out, but may we continue to press in, Lord, and may we be, make a difference in this life. I just pray right now that everything you have predestined over our life will come to pass, that we will come into alignment with what you say about us now in the name of Jesus, that it will start to line up, Lord God, that we will see ourselves from your perspective, Lord, and move forth in what you're saying over our life now. We thank you that you're calling us now to be trailblazers. You're calling us to be pioneers, Lord. You're calling us to do what we ha what has not been done before, Lord. You don't reinvent the wheel, but you do something new, God. And we declare you're doing a new thing in this season. So we thank you for this moment in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen. God bless you. So right now, Tawanda is going to come. And she is going to be sharing with us today. So as she comes, I am just going to actually let us just take a moment to pray for Pastor Greg. He is recovering. He is doing well. And I also want to pray for anyone else that is in surgery or recovering from an, an illness or health issues. Just raise your hands if that's you. I'm going to pray for Pastor Greg and all those that are recovering, doing, going through surgery. I know Julie Pippin's dad's going through surgery. I'm going to pray with you right now. So, Father God, we lift up Pastor Greg to you. We pray continual healing over his body in the name of the Lord. We pray that you'll strengthen him from the inside out. You'll bring realignment, Father God, to his neck and to his spine area, Lord. And I pray right now, quicken that healing in the name of Jesus, Lord. We pray for your ministering angels over that family now in the name of the Lord and for everyone that is here present that is either recovering from an illness a health issue we pray right now healing in their body in the name of the Lord I pray a deliverance from the spirit of affliction in the name of Jesus I pray you'll deliver your bride now from a spirit of affliction in the name of the Lord and we pray right now for anyone going through surgery Lord Julie Pippin's dad right now we lift him up Father God and anyone else Father we pray you watch over the surgery God, you watch over the surgeon's hands in the name of Jesus, and we pray right now, Father, that you will cover and quicken the healing process in their life after surgery. We thank you, Lord, for this time in Jesus' name. So thank you right now. This is Tawanda. Let me just pray for her. So Father God, I thank you for Tawanda now and the word that is on her heart. We pray right now for the anointing that is in her, Father, that you will lead and guide now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for that spirit of faith that is in her, Lord, that's going to ignite in others right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise his holy name. For our God is great and greatly to be praised. He is God. And beside him, there is no other. I'm so grateful to be with you today and, um, you know, just thanking our pastors, Pastor Greg and Pastor Tamara for the opportunity um, to share and thank God for um, Pastor Fiona and how she leads our freedom and prayer ministry. I'm just excited about what God's going to do. I don't know if you came expecting, but don't expect to hear from Tawanda, but expect to hear from the Lord. Father, we just thank you. I thank you for your presence is here. I thank you for your people that have gathered in your name, Lord, to worship and to give you glory and to give you honor and praise. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. Isn't he good like that? Sometimes when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done, my soul begins to cry out, hallelujah. And then I shift from thinking about just the fact of the things that he's done, but to go into worship into who he is. And when my mind's eye begins to conceive who God is, whew, hallelujah. All right, so I'm going to get into the word for just a few moments. And so as I was preparing for the message today, um, the Lord, you know, in this season for me in prayer and as we, you know, are just in our different spiritual journeys, I feel like the Lord has had me in a place of almost silence where I just need to sit and listen to him. And, you know, and Pastor Fiona challenges us as intercessors 
that we need to not just pray earthbound prayers, but we need to pray heavenbound prayers, that we are able to sit in the presence of God and receive what the Lord wants to release in the earth and pray into that. And boy, I'm telling you, it makes you more effective. And you tap into a realm of the spirit that just takes you higher in God. And boy, I tell you, I love this season. So as I was, pre- I was, as I was preparing in this season and talking to the Lord, asking Father, Father, what would you have me to say? And I felt like the Lord impressed and asked me a question. And so today, we're going to talk about COVID babies. We're going to talk about COVID babies. Now, I know we're in the season of COVID and, you know, it's been months and things are happening. But today, the Lord is asking a question. What will you conceive or what will you give birth to in this season? I know the season is tight. I know that things don't look favorable, but the Lord is asking a question. What will you give birth to in this season? And I felt it was really personal for me because I'm a mother of four children, right? So I have four girls, praise the Lord. Uh, My my oldest are twins. So I've had the opportunity to birth multiples, hallelujah. Mm. And so when the Lord asked me that question, I was like, okay, Lord, right? And so I present that to you, Crossing Church, and for those that are online. The Lord is asking, what will you conceive or birth in this season? So that would suggest that there are two specific postures, if you would, right? One, uh, there's a group of us that may be in the conceiving season, right? And there's another group that may be in the birthing season. And so the Lord has even said that with what he's been saying today, with us being alignment, right? So in order for you to even think about giving birth, think about conceiving, you need to align yourself with that, right? And so if we listen to what the Lord is saying, I think that we will get the word specifically for us individually. So again, I'm a mom. I have four children. My oldest two are um, our twins. And praise God, they're turning 27 years old um, next month. And then my middle daughter, my middle daughter is uh, 22. And then I have an 18-year-old. So I have adult children. And I also have three grandchildren. So, yes, the Lord's been good to me. Yes, honey. God's been good. And so I'm so grateful for my legacy. And so we all, you know, you have your own earthly children and all of that. But God is asking you a question about what will you birth in the spirit? What will you conceive or bear in this COVID season? What will you allow yourself to give birth to? And so as he he posed that question to me, he had me go to the scriptures and look at the life of Sarah and Abraham. Amen. So if you would, if you would turn your Bibles to Genesis, the 21st chapter, we'll kind of start there. Don't you love when the Lord asks you a question? Not as if he he doesn't already know the answer to it, but he's wanting you to press in. He's wanting you to get into the word. And so when we receive a, a prophetic word, it's just like giving birth, right? It comes to you in a seed form. So it's up to you to nurture that word. It's up to you to cultivate it. It's up to you to give birth to it. And so what we want to talk about today is conceiving and birthing. But then we want to talk about what are some of the challenges to give birth. And we can see that evident in the life of Abraham and Sarah. So if you have your Bibles at Genesis, the 21st chapter, that's what we're going to look at today. And we'll just take a few minutes to explore that. And so I'll just read it real quick. Genesis 21, and it says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight year, eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born. Let me say that again. He was 100 years old when he gave birth. I know some of you are saying, it's too late in the game for me. My days are over. 
But I'm telling you, look what Abraham and Sarah, they were 100 years old and they gave birth. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh. <laughs> God has made me laugh and all who hear will laugh with me. She also said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have bore, born him a son in his old age. And so if you think about the situation they were in, these hundred year old adults giving birth to children, um, if you have the photo that I, that I sent, um, if you could share that, I just want to give you an image. Okay. So think about that, right? These couples giving birth. And so some of the couples you'll see, um, there's some of them that have been married for 90 years. That couple in the middle, she was 100, I think it was 103 years old and gave birth. Could you imagine? Look. I told y'all I have four kids right now. I have four grandkids. Um, I'm in my 40-something. Hmm. And so I couldn't imagine even at this age giving birth. But mind you, you saw the image. In their 90s, in their 100 years old, giving birth to a child. And so that suggests to me that, listen, God will use whatever God will use you to birth something. It doesn't matter about your condition. It doesn't matter about your circumstance. Those limitations are in your mind, but they're not in God's. So Abraham and Sarah, at the ripe old age of 100 years old, they bore a child. And his, son, his, his name was Isaac. And Isaac means he, he, he will laugh. So it's in that laughter that God birthed them a child. And so for just a moment, I'd like for you to think about, you're in a season, right? They're in a season where the conditions weren't favorable. It wasn't favorable for them to give birth at that age. We're, many of us are in unfavorable circumstances, unfavorable con conditions. Emotionally, we are challenged. Physically, we are challenged. Spiritually, we are challenged. But God is still saying to you, what will you birth? What will you conceive in this hour? And I have good things in store for you because God is able to do anything. And we'll see in the passage of Scripture that Sarah even, the question was posed, is there anything too hard for the Lord? And the answer to that is no. There's absolutely nothing too hard for God. So what can we glean from the life of Sarah and Abraham? So if we go back just a timeline real quick, as I was uh, studying this passage, if you go back to Genesis 12, Genesis 12 and uh, 2, that's when the Lord says to Abraham, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. So you back up, 100 years old, he finally bears the child. But the journey was not an easy one. And so the birthing process is not easy. But I will tell you that each pregnancy is different. Each situation and circumstance that you give birth to the promises of God in your life are going to be glaringly different. I remember uh, being pregnant with my twins. And I was, uh, at that point, uh, I was about, I was a lot smaller frame, I will say that. And so at that time, you know, I was short in stature and I was trying to even figure out in my mind, how in the world is this body going to produce two babies? How in the world will I be able to walk around carrying two babies? And I carried those babies to term and they were born 6'3 and 6'4. Hallelujah. And so you know how they me measure your fundus? From here to here when you're pregnant, I think that's what it's called, nurses, y'all help me out. So when they marry, measure you from here to here, that tells you the progression and the growth of your baby, right? And so God wants us to continue to get in the word of God so that you're measuring the healthy growth of your baby. So at one point, I remember measuring um, from here to here, big, I was, I was uh, the, 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 uh, the measurement of that was more than, than uh, my height right? Because I was only 4'11 or something like that. And I was measuring like 50. So I was carrying this big weight. And I remember having back pains. 
I remember my shoulders hurting. I remember not being able to roll easily out of bed. So your condition of conceiving and birthing is not going to be easy. You may have to struggle a little bit. You may have to twist and turn. I remember having to roll out of bed, not being able to get up when I wanted to get up. You may not, be, you may not get the movement you think you will, but I'm telling you, if you hold on and rest in the promises of God, God will allow you to birth that baby. And it will be beautiful. You know, uh, think of the scripture that talks about, you know, the woman as she's giving birth, you know, it's hard. But when she births that baby, it's beautiful. When you give birth to the promises of God, it is beautiful. And you'll begin to remember. I remember what the Lord did. And it's beautiful in your eyes. So again, as we go back to this timeline in Genesis 12 and 2, that's when he says, uh, you know, Abraham, I'm going to make your name great. And you will be a blessing. And so that's that pass through. As God begins to, to talk to you about the promises of God and that what you're going to burst or manifest in your life is not about you. So in this time, he may, be, he may be birthing ministry in you. He may be birthing a deeper purpose in you. He may be birthing businesses in you. He may be birthing uh, just the word of God in you. For you, we're all on different spiritual levels, right? And so God may be birthing in you the fundamentals of his promises, where he's birthing a job. He's birthing a vocation. He's birthing something in you. But God wants you to posture yourself so that you can conceive and birth. And so Abraham, in uh, Genesis 12 and, uh, 12 and 4, so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old. So Abraham had been on that journey for a long time. How many of you feel like God has given you a promise and God showed you something and it's been a long time and it hasn't manifested? But I'm here today to remind you and encourage you, don't give up, my brother and sister. Don't give up because the word of the Lord is true. God is faithful to his promises. He said that heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will remain. God tells us also in his word that if you, if thou faint in the day of adversity, then your faith is small. But hold on a little while longer. When I was a little girl, they used to say that in an old church with my grandmother. They used to say, hold on, baby. Hold on a little while longer. The Lord is faithful. And I didn't understand what that meant. But now as an adult, I understand. God is so faithful. He will not fail you. He will release the promise in your Lord, in your life. He will allow you to give birth to that promise. But it happens in a season. The question is, what will you do in that season? What will you do in a season of birthing? Will you posture yourself? Will you posture yourself to hear from the Lord? Abraham postured himself to hear from the Lord. So it's that heart posture. I kept reading in the passages how, how the Lord would say, and the Lord said to Abraham, and Abraham was under a tree, and the Lord spoke. Abraham this, and the Lord spoke. Sarah did this, and the Lord spoke. They postured themselves to hear from the Lord. Mm. So what's your heart posture? What is your, your heart posture? Have you postured yourself to hear from the Lord? Are you spending time in the word of God and in prayer? Are you allowing yourself to meditate on the word of God? Or are we spending too much time on other things? Abraham and Sarah had a heart, heart posture to hear from the Lord. And so that gave them endurance and stamina. It doesn't mean that they didn't have obstacles. But despite their obstacles, they relied and trust on the Lord. And so we're not asking you to step over your emotions, to step over the areas that you may have feelings about, right? So we dealt with, in, in, in one of the scriptures it talks about in Genesis 18, um, it talks about how Sarah laughed, right? So these three men came and, and, um, and, and visited, and they, they were even saying, you know, Sarah, you're going to have a son in, in, in this next season when we come. And Sarah laughed. And so Abraham also laughed. He laughed. So the both of them had areas of where they struggled in their belief in believing God. And so God wants us to have congruency in our lives, that we can, we can function from a place of authenticity. And where you say, Lord, I know what you said. And your laughter said, all right, Lord, that's, a, that's one. Mm, 
Uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know how that one's going to happen. But in your laughter, that may represent unbelief. What do you do with that? What do you do with those areas of unbelief? And God keeps giving us the word. He's giving us his promises. I think about, even think about the past two Sundays. So when we, we hear that word and we're dealing with unbelief, if we go to the word with Pastor Hector and how he encouraged us to kind of take a step back and to investigate the crime scene, if you would, to determine how you're going to respond or react, right? If you think about what Pastor Stephen, uh, he shared on Sunday, let God be our focus, right? So if you think about when you're dealing with areas of unbelief, that's when you press into the word. But from a place of authenticity, ask the Father, Lord, help my unbelief. The disciples said, Lord, help me with my unbelief. Lord, I know you want to birth this thing. I, I, I know what you showed me, and, but I need your help with my unbelief. And that's that place of authenticity because it's that place where the Lord can begin to grow you and develop you in the word. So when you go to the, the Lord in that place of unbelief, then allow God to show you in his word where you need to begin uh, growing in the word, meditating, where you're giving your baby or that promise the nourishment that it needs in order to grow from one trimester to another. So there will be areas of unbelief. We see that in Abraham and Sarah's life. And then we think about the obstacles. They face obstacles, the condition, the physical limitations that they face, the biological situation they face, the relationship challenges that they face. In this journey, you think about how Abraham, him and Sarah, um, you know, were traveling. He had to fight a battle for his nephew, Lot. He had to repent for saying that Sarah was his sister and not his wife. I mean, this journey was not an easy one. And God wasn't expecting perfection from Abraham. And so that's where the enemy sometimes will trap us into thinking that, you know, hey, I can't do that big thing that the Lord has shown me. I can't do that. I'm not perfect. He never asked you to be perfect. But he did ask you for dependency, dependency on him, trusting that he was able to do exceedingly in your life, that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it. And so Abraham and Sarah had to deal with the fact versus truth situation. The fact was her body was wrinkled. The fact was, you know, at that age, how are you going to even, I'm thinking in my mind, how is she going to wake up at night with the baby? You know, you're tired and all. Of, so all of these physical conditions, the moms, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you're excited about that baby, but boy, when you come home, it's like, oh, mom, you leaving? I thought you were staying to help me you know, with the with the baby. I, I think about when I was giving birth to my twins and how tired I was, how fatigued I was. And I was young. I was, I was like 19 years old. And so I had the energy. I had the stamina. But I was still tired. So I can imagine giving birth, not just, a, not just Sarah, but Abraham, because both of them probably, you know, they have a baby crying, all of these conditions. But God was faithful in it. God was faithful in it. So what will you conceive? What will you bear in this season? And, you know, you think about all of the demands of a new newborn. No wonder they laugh. They were like, oh, yeah, Lord. Hmm, I don't know about that. I know we have some handmade servants around here because we're going to need them to help us with this baby. Right? And so those areas, too, of unbelief. Remember, be authentic with the Lord. You know, I'm at a time in my life, it is what it is. And meaning that I'm not fancying anything up. I'm not jazzing anything up. It's me and Jesus. And I trust that God will perfect everything that concerns me. And I'm not measuring my life compared to anybody else. I am who God says I am. I will be who God says I will be. I'll do the things that God has called me to do. And so God be glorified in my life, not people. God be glorified in my life, not people. Even, as, even when you give birth to something, there are times where you have to release it because it's manifest. Now it's time for you to step back and give birth to something else. 
I have my children, I have four children. I've given birth to them, right? They're adults. And so my parenting style with them is different. You know, I'm more of a coach because they're grown. They, you know, they do their own thing. But I got my grandbabies. I have another place, again, another area that I can pour into, that I can help birth spiritually, right? And so many of you are saying, well, I'm at an age where I've done it all. No, you haven't. God still wants to use you mightily. God still wants to birth in you. I think about, thank you, Holy Spirit. Some time ago, it was around Easter. Um, the Lord had showed me in a, in a, in a dream. Pastor, Pastor uh, Greg and Pastor Tamara, they were standing in front of the platform. And it was all of these babies that were on the floor and they were trying to catch these babies and they couldn't move them all and so pastor jonas he came and you know he was trying to help with some the other staff pastors they were coming trying to help but it was so many babies that they could not they couldn't manage it all and so i know that the lord is telling us we need to help with these babies God is birthing ministry in you. There is a word on the inside of you that is full of truth and revelation that God wants you to share so that you can help to take care of these babies. So that when you birth one and you push it out, pick up another. You birth one, you push it out, pick up another. And so God has a great plan for our lives. And again, we're all on different spiritual levels, facing different spiritual journeys. But we cannot allow COVID to determine what God wants to do. When God is clearly saying, what will you birth in this season? I know that you're dealing with COVID. I know you have frustrations. I know you have emotional limitations. But even in this time of quarantine, quarantine yourself and connect with me. So be a quarantine connector. Can we all say that? I am a quarantine connector. That I connect with Jesus. That I connect with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Allowing God to birth in my life. Hallelujah. And so 2 Corinthians 1, it tells us, For the promises of God in him are yes, and in him amen. So the Lord is asking you a question. In your quiet time, I believe that you, you know, if you, if you would process this, right? process what God is saying because think about what he did from the beginning of service to now to this point we created a pathway for the presence of God right so that we would be aware because God's presence is always with us right because he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us but do we have the awareness of the presence of God all times no so during our worship we begin to create a pathway for the presence of God giving us ears to hear then he immediately gave us a sign and a wonder for healing. He gave a word of knowledge to say, if, you're, if you need healing, it's right here for you. So it's an invitation. The other invitation was, come into alignment with me because I have some things I want to show you and release in you. Then the next thing, now he's saying, I want to take it further. I want you to conceive and I want to birth it in you. So people of God, we have to pay attention to what God is saying. Pressing in and listening to the realm of the spirit and not getting caught up in maybe the hoopla and the hype. And usually, you know, I'm a hyped up preacher usually, you know, but I felt the Lord wanting me to calm and settle so that you can hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. I've been prayerful about what God is birthing in my life. And I'm telling you, I believe God for a beautiful baby. And I believe, God, that as he's given me multiples in the natural, that he will birth uh, multiples in me in the spirit. I come from a line of multiple births. My family, we have about eight uh, sets of twins, all natural, right? Twins are not a big deal in my family. So when we think about the things that manifest in our bloodline, pay attention to the good. Because I'm believing, God, that just as we have multiple births in our bloodline, that God would begin to begin to mold, birth multiple things in our lives. That we will begin to push out in effective ways the things that the Lord would have us to do. And for my intercessors, I would challenge us that this is our time where we need to press in and push. That we need to help those that will posture themselves to give birth in the spirit. 
So the Lord asked us the first thing, are you aligned? And now the next thing he wants us to know, are you posturing yourself to give birth? Are you bearing down? Because, yes, the pains are coming. But when the pains come, it allows you to give birth to something beautiful. Oh, how many of you would say to the Lord, birth something beautiful out of me? Lord, give me something beautiful. I thank you that my baby is beautiful, God. I thank you that this promise that you're releasing in my life is beautiful. And so, God, we thank you. And as we close... Just the prayer principles that the Lord had laid on my heart was that we allow the Father, that we allow ourselves to experience and conceive birth of your promises in this season. And God, that we may seek your face in this area, that we will posture ourselves for birthing, that we may bear down in the spirit in order to push in your season, that you will grow us in your word, giving us faith to believe that there is nothing too hard for you. In Genesis 18, it says, 18 and 14, was there anything too hard for the Lord? And the answer is no. But are you fully persuaded of that? Father, persuade us that there's nothing too hard for you. And then Holy Spirit, teach us to look beyond the obstacles and gain and trust our Father God. And so, Lord, I thank you for this word today. I pray, God, that this word would fall on good ground that your people, Father, would take the word and they would hide it in their heart, God, that they, Father, would begin to conceive and bear righteous fruit. God, I thank you, Lord, for what you're producing in us here at the crossing. For those that are online, I thank you, God, for calling us, God, to this birthing time, this conceiving season, Lord. And so, Father, I give you glory. I give you honor. And I pray, God, specifically, there's an individual you're contemplating. You're in a situation of, I I sense that you're going to medical school. It was specific about someone that is is having trouble um, in medical school. You're facing difficulties in this COVID season. There is a financial challenge that you're facing. Um, You're thinking, you're not sure if you should go back to school. There's a lot of turmoil within you right now. You've been in my prayer time, but the Lord is saying to you, I have an answer to all of that. That I want to use you to birth great things in this season. And so I would challenge you, whoever that is, if honor in this room to trust God and to press into what the Lord is saying to you in this season. And so, Father, we give you glory. I thank you, Father God, for your word. I thank you for your people. I thank you and praise you, Father God, for doing a new thing. I thank you for signs and wonders following your word because we believe you, God. And so we trust you, Lord. We trust you for the word being made manifest in our lives. We give you glory, Father. We give you honor in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord.